Have you ever wondered about the difference between conventional and nuclear-powered aircraft carriers? These behemoths aren't just floating airbases, they're symbols of power, influencing global dynamics beyond the battlefield. With their capacity to project air power anywhere on the globe, they are vital assets in military operations. But what sets a conventional carrier apart from its nuclear counterpart? Is one superior to the other? And how do they stack up economically? Stay tuned as we unpack the mystery behind these floating airbases. Before we delve deeper, it's crucial to understand what we mean by conventional and nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. Conventional aircraft carriers, also known as catabar carriers, utilize a steam-powered catapult system to launch aircraft. They run on fossil fuels, usually diesel or gas, and require frequent refueling, but they're typically faster to build and less expensive up front. On the other hand, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are fueled by nuclear reactors. These reactors provide an almost limitless power source, eliminating the need for frequent refueling stops. This means a nuclear-powered carrier can operate for over 20 years without refueling, but it's not all rosy. They take a longer time to build, and the upfront costs are significantly higher compared to conventional carriers. The USS Gerald R. Ford, for instance, is a nuclear-powered carrier, while the Queen Elizabeth class represents conventional carriers. Now that we know what they are, let's examine how they compare. Conventional aircraft carriers have been around for a while, but are they still relevant in today's high-tech warfare? Well, let's delve into the pros and cons of conventional aircraft carriers, with the Queen Elizabeth class as our reference. Conventional carriers, like the Queen Elizabeth, are powered by gas turbines and diesel engines. This allows for a relatively shorter build time compared to their nuclear counterparts. They can also dock at any port without restrictions, offering strategic flexibility. On the flip side, conventional carriers need to refuel more frequently, limiting their operational range. This could potentially expose the carrier and its accompanying fleet to enemy attacks during these critical refueling periods. Another advantage of conventional carriers is that they are less expensive to build and operate. The Queen Elizabeth class, for instance, costs around £3 billion per ship, a fraction of the cost of a nuclear-powered carrier like the USS Gerald R. Ford. However, the lower operational costs of conventional carriers are offset by higher fuel costs and more frequent maintenance due to the wear and tear of mechanical parts. Moreover, the lower power output of conventional carriers limits the size of the air wing they can support, reducing their overall offensive capabilities. In terms of environmental impact, conventional carriers produce more carbon emissions compared to nuclear carriers, which is a significant drawback in today's climate-conscious world. While conventional carriers have their merits, they are not without their drawbacks. Nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are the new kids on the block, but how do they stack up against their conventional counterparts? Let's take a look at the USS Gerald R. Ford, the first of a new class of nuclear-powered supercarriers. One of the most significant advantages of nuclear power is the incredible endurance it offers. These carriers can operate for over 20 years without needing to refuel. This means they can remain at sea for extended periods, providing a constant presence wherever they're needed. Additionally, nuclear power provides a tremendous amount of energy. This energy not only propels the carrier, but also powers the ship's systems and the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, a significant upgrade from the steam catapults used on conventional carriers. However, it's not all smooth sailing for these nuclear giants. The main disadvantage is the astronomical cost. Building a nuclear-powered carrier like the USS Gerald R. Ford comes with a hefty price tag, significantly more than conventional carriers. The technology is complex and requires specialized knowledge and facilities, adding to the overall cost. There's also the issue of nuclear waste. Though the reactors are designed with safety in mind, disposing of spent fuel is a complex and expensive process. Lastly, in the event of a disaster, a nuclear-powered carrier could potentially cause significant environmental damage, a risk not present with conventional carriers. As we can see, nuclear-powered carriers bring a lot to the table, but they are not without their own set of challenges. Beyond military might, there's another crucial factor to consider. Economics. When we compare the costs of building and operating conventional and nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, the numbers tell an interesting story. Constructing a conventional carrier, like the Queen Elizabeth class, is quicker and less expensive up front. The ongoing costs, however, can mount up. Think about the fuel, 
the personnel, the maintenance. On the other hand, a nuclear-powered carrier such as the USS Gerald R. Ford demands a larger initial investment, but in the long run, it can prove to be a cost-effective choice. The nuclear reactors can run for up to 20 years without refueling, reducing operating expenses over time. Plus, with fewer crew members required, personnel costs are also lower. Of course, the economic equation isn't straightforward. It's influenced by various factors like geopolitical considerations, technological advancements, and military objectives. As we can see, the choice between conventional and nuclear power isn't just about military strategy, it's also about economics. So, which is better? Conventional or nuclear-powered aircraft carriers? We've dissected this complex question into several key aspects. Conventional carriers, like the Queen Elizabeth class, have their own set of strengths. They're faster to build and less expensive initially. They offer flexibility, operating independently of refueling for weeks. However, they are not as speedy and require frequent refueling, which can expose them to potential threats. On the other side of the coin, we have nuclear-powered carriers, epitomized by the USS Gerald R. Ford. These technological marvels can operate for over 20 years without refueling, presenting a clear advantage in endurance and operational availability. They're faster, can carry more aircraft, and have a greater power output. But they come with a hefty price tag, not only in terms of construction, but also decommissioning. Moreover, the potential for nuclear accidents, although rare, is a risk to consider. Economically, it's a toss-up. Conventional carriers have a lower upfront cost, but their operational costs can add up over time. Nuclear-powered carriers have a higher initial cost, but their long-term operation may be more cost-effective. The debate isn't black and white, it's a spectrum of greys, each shade representing a different strategic need, financial resource, and technological capability. We've presented the facts, laid out the pros and cons, and now we turn the question to you. Ultimately, the choice between conventional and nuclear power depends on a country's strategic needs, financial resources, and technological capabilities. So which would you choose?